Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over an Achilles themed build. Honestly guys, this setup can hit really hard with its weapon attack power reaching as high as 1250. We also got every weapon slot being used, so you're not going to get bored with this build at all. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content, or... That's why no one will remember your name. Hey, I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. Also, if you find this video interesting, I have tons of other build related videos on my channel, if you want to check them out afterwards. Alright guys, let's dive into the build starting off with the Achilles weapons. It was a bit hard trying to find some to really match the ones of his own. But the closest and most effective one you can use would be the broadsword with the heavy variation. It's got more of a slashing move set than other straight swords, so it's good for covering short area of effect attacks. So people aren't going to be able to dodge around you as easily. Also, the heavy attack just looks really cool, being a little bit unique. With the Ash of War, the best one to use would be Squared Off. It just really matches this one scene from the movie, so it was a must-have. Your character does a similar movement, bracing into a stance with his sword pointing straight forward and either doing a thrusting motion for a good amount of damage, or if you press the light attack, he swings his sword upwards, which breaks people's shield extremely easily. So this Ash of War doesn't just have the looks and damage, but it's also got utility, breaking an enemy's stance, which is such a nice addition. And because the broadsword swings pretty fast, using Millicent's prothesis is going to help out by increasing our damage with successive attacks. And it gives us 5 levels in dex, which helps out with saving some stat points later on. It's a pretty good talisman all around. Next up, we have the Achilles Shield. For that, we're going to be using the black leather shield. It just fits the whole look really well while being decent with its functionality. Like, it's not perfect. But it's still a viable option. If you want to block and counterattack with the shield, you should use the Ash of War Barricade. It just reinforces the shield, making you lose less stamina when you do block attacks, and staggers enemies' attacks as well. If you don't care too much about counterattacking, you can easily use the no skill Ash of War so you can have the shield equipped while being able to do the sword special attack. Personally, I swap between the two cause it's just fun changing up your playstyle with such ease. Now back to our main hand for probably the most fun weapon in this build, the spear. Yeah. And yes, you can throw the spear as well and land headshots just like he does. For that, we're going to be using the Partisan with the heavy variation since this is more of a strength focused build. But the most important part of it is the Ash of War that lets us throw the spear, Spectral Lance. Honestly, the spear's throw damage is a little bit on the weak side so you'll want to use the Shard of Alexander to add an extra 15% damage, and that includes all Ashes of War. So that's the most fun weapon, next we have the most effective weapon, dual wielding swords. The outcome's going to be the exact same as the movie, demolishing whoever stands in front of you. And for that, we're going to use the weathered sword with the heavy variation, mainly because of the weapon's looks. Like yes there are some slightly better straight swords in terms of damage and range, but I find this one to look more like the swords in the ancient Achilles era. There's not really an Ash of War that would work amazingly well just because we have our other swords Ash of War to use. So going with Horfrost Stomp as its Ash of War is our best option, just so we can place a freeze effect on enemies to make them take 20% increased damage for 30 seconds. This is more if you're really struggling with a boss, which you shouldn't be at all with this setup, but it doesn't hurt to have on. Since we're using two straight swords that attack pretty fast, using the Rotten Wing Talisman is going to increase our damage with successive attacks. It's the same thing as Millicent's Prothesis, except it doesn't give us 5 levels in dex, but it increases our damage even more with successive attacks. The best thing about this is these two talismans stack on top of each other, so that's part of the way we make our weapons damage shoot up like crazy. Alright, 4 weapons down, 2 more to go. Well, one of them isn't a weapon, it's actually a sacred seal. The finger seal to be exact, 
just going with this one because there isn't anything that really benefits us and this one has really low stat requirements to use it. So it just works out perfectly. Now we're only using one spell, Golden Vow, which increases our character's damage by 15% and our protection by another 10%. It just goes with the whole Achilles theme since he was invincible everywhere except for his heal and he was a half god after all. We made it to the last weapon which is more optional than actually needed, the Black Bow. I'm saying this because there aren't any scenes, well none that I can remember where he is using a bow but I feel like it just suits him really well. The reason I specifically went for the Black Bow is because it does more damage than the Short Bows and it's Ash of War Barrage which lets you rapid fire arrows. So it's good to use with Blood Arrows so you can proc a bleed buildup as fast as possible. Or you could use the Long Bow for the Ash of War Mighty Shot which shoots much slower but does a lot more upfront damage. Using Fire Arrows would be best just because those do possibly the most damage and they're pretty easy to acquire. And lastly, I'm using the Arrow Sting Talisman to help out with the bow's damage by an extra 15%. Next up, we have the Flask of Wondrous Physic. For that, we'll want to use the Thorny Crack tier, which does the same thing as the Rotten Wing Talisman, increasing our damage with successive attacks, and all of these stack on top of each other. So once you start swinging your swords, you're clear-cutting anyone in front of you. And the other tier, which is more optional, the Strength Crystal Knot just increasing our strength by 10 levels for some extra damage. But if you have one that you would prefer more, that wouldn't make a huge impact on this build. Before we get into the stats required, let's take a better look at the armor. Now I tried my best to match the look by using the Tree Sentinel Helm, Elden Lord's Armor, Godskin Bracelets, and the Perfumer's Boots. None of these offer any kind of buffs and they're all simply for cosmetic purposes only. You could also go helmetless to match the look even better. I'm just not good with character customization to match his look, so that's why I'm using this helmet. For the minimum stats required, you'll need at least 10 strength, 20 dex, and 25 faith. Pretty low requirements, so it's not hard to get this build going at all. Afterwards, I'd recommend putting most of your points into strength to increase your damage and vigor for more health, since, you know, the Achilles was an absolute unit. Now I'm just going to show some more gameplay of the build in action, but before that I'd like to thank the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.